Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at some tricks and traps for black in the king and pawn opening. The first trick which we are going to look at is the center fork trick which occurs in the four knights defense. Okay, so the starting moves are e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6. And here the best move for white is to play the move bishop to b5 attacking the knight. But I've seen many people confusing this opening with Gioco Piano and playing the move bishop c4. Here, black has a very good reply, which at least equalizes the position or gets him the advantage. The move is knight takes e4. Yes, the pawn is being supported by the knight, but black has a very good reply to knight takes e4. It is the move pawn to d5, forking the bishop and knight and we are gaining a piece back. Here white has many replies. Let's look at them one by one. If white plays bishop takes d5, then we can capture back with a queen, attacking the knight, so the knight has to save himself. Knight goes to c3, in turn attacking our queen. The queen comes back to d6. White castles and black plays bishop g4. Black is getting ready to castle on the queen side and black in this position has a very good game. The center pawn gives him a nice advantage in the center of the board. Let's go back to the trick. Okay, so after d5, instead of taking on d5, white has the move bishop b5. Over here, black can continue with taking our piece back. Okay, taking on e4. Now the knight is getting attacked. And here the knight can actually take this pawn since this knight is pinned by the bishop, right? So we cannot capture it back. But black has a very good move, which is queen g5, attacking the knight and attacking the pawn. It's a fork again. And in case the knight moves, we can also attack the bishop as well. So the best move which white has in this position is to actually capture the knight with his knight. We take the bishop and then the knight saves himself by attacking the queen. The queen comes back to b6, attacking the knight in return. And then white plays c3. And this position is actually good for black, but mainly because of the bishop pair and the far advanced center pawn. So let's go back. Okay, instead of taking with the knight, if white tries to be greedy, and takes with the bishop. Here we can take back and then if knight captures the pawn, yes, white has won a pawn, but black can just get it back right away and attack the rook in return. Now that there's only one move to save the rook, which is rook f1, but after bishop g4, something bad has happened for white. The queen is getting attacked and she is trapped. She has nowhere to move. The only move to try and defend is to block the bishop with the pawn. But after e takes f3, the pawn is looking to come down with a check and then the queen will get captured. So the only way to stop the pawn is to play rook f1 to rook f2. So in this position, we can do a check with the queen. Now the rook has to block okay the king has no other squares and then we can play f2 with a check and now since the rook cannot move away since he is blocking the check it is a check mate the king cannot move anywhere so that's what happens when you try to be greedy now let's go back in the position so we have looked at bishop takes d5 and bishop b5 now let's look at the best move the best move for white is actually playing the move bishop d3 after which we get a piece back and then we develop our bishop supporting our pawn and here the position is fairly equal black has no problems black is getting ready to castle on the king side white is getting ready ready to castle on the king side and then there's normal development and a good game for both sides so the next trick which we are going to look at after e4 e5 is the Blackburn shilling trap. Okay, it starts with the move e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then bishop c4. Okay, this is called the Italian game 
or the Giocco piano. We do not play knight c3, but we directly go bishop c4. Okay. In this position, the best move for black is actually to go bishop c5. But if you want to try for some tricks, you can try this move, knight d4, which is the start of the blackburn chilling trap. In this position, the best move which white has is to actually capture the knight. But if white is greedy and goes after the pawn, it does not end up well for him. Black in this position again can go with the move queen g5, forking the knight and the pawn. The knight can again try to be very tricky and give a fork in return. But here the queen has this move. Queen takes g2, attacking the rook, and that rook will be captured with a check. So the best move, of course, is to save the rook. But here the queen has this move. Queen takes e4, giving a check to the king, and that king does not look in a good position. Okay. So here the most logical move is to block the check with the bishop because if you take uh, protect your king with your queen, then the knight can capture your queen. So in this position, the most logical move seems to be bishop to e2. But here black has the move knight f3 check, which is actually a checkmate. The bishop is not able to capture the knight because the queen would be giving a check. So bishop is in a pin and it is a checkmate. So this is known as the blackburn shilling trap. Let's go back. After bishop c4, the best move for black is to play bishop c5. And after c3, okay, white is looking to go d4, so black needs to counterattack and counterattack fast. So knight f6 putting pressure on the e4 pawn. White pushes the pawn forward. We take, white takes back, bishop b4 check. But there are two moves, okay. The knight c3 move is a gambit where black gets to capture this pawn and this knight is not able to capture back because it's in a pin. So most people don't play that. The most popular move is bishop d2, after which black captures and white captures back supporting the pawn. The black continues with d5 striking back in the center. And after pawn takes, knight takes, the position is fairly equal. Both sides have good chances to win the game. Thank you.